Hey, Jesus. Come on, let's give God a hand. Yes, Lord, you've been yes, Lord Jesus. so, so good. Yes, you have. Yes. You've been, Lord, you've been, you've been so good. And I just want to thank, I have to thank you, Lord. You may. Away, just let me see. You made, you made, you made a way. Yes, you have. You made, Lord, you made, you made a way. And I just want to thank, thank you, Lord. Help me sing that. You, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, you, Lord, and I just want to thank you. Praise in my spirit. Oh, yes. God. Yes. He keeps on blessing me. He keeps on blessing me. Lord, He keeps on blessing me. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Sing it one more time. Thank you. Ah, yeah, ah, thank you, people of God. Thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, we glorify you in this place. We exalt your name, God, because you are a great God. You are a holy God. You are omnipresent God. But most of all, you are faithful God. And Lord, we just want to thank you. We just want to praise you, God. We want to give you the glory, oh God. We just want to give you the honor, oh God. Father God, we decrease, oh God. So you may increase within us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, destroy yokes in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, break chains on the day, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have thine own way, God. There, God. Let your shakala glory fall off in this place. God, we can't do nothing without you. But with all things, we can do everything with you, God. And we just want to give you the glory. We just do your name, God. God, we just thank you. We love you, God. We reverence your presence in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, Come on, people of God. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I felt the fresh anointing that dropped off in this place. Hallelujah. Sometimes we be waiting on the word for God to move, but God is the type of person he can move any way he want to move. We just have to have a spirit of expectation. We have to be hungry for the things of God. Come on here, somebody. I don't know about nobody else, but I want more of God and less of me. Because the more I die to self, the more God will come into me and do what he got to do through me. No longer my will, but thine will be done. Yes, Not only on this earth, but in me as well. Yes. That means I got to push myself out of the way and let God have complete control of my life. Come on here, somebody. Just give God a hand clap of praise. 
Lord, the Holy Ghost got a message for some of us in here. Hey, God, I just thank him. I give honor to everybody in this house on today, to the woman of God. The protocol has been established. So if you have your word, please stand. We're going to turn to Romans 10. Because people of God, I don't know about you. But Jesus is soon to return. Yes, he is. Yes, Lord. You can see the times. Yes. Yes, Lord. Mothers against daughters and yes. daughters against mothers and sons against fathers and murders and everything else. Yes, Lord. People with the love of money and things happening. Famine has taken place. This virus, Jesus is soon to return. Yes, yes, yes. And he's coming back for a church without a spot. Or wrinkle. Yes, yes. And we're not talking about this building. Come on here, somebody. We are the church. Oh, my God. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Romans 10. This may be a little elementary lesson for some of us. But the Lord say you speak it. That if, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto Salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most holy words. And if you need a topic, what are you confessing? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What are you confessing? Are you confessing the death over life? Are you confessing defeat over victory? Are you confessing your sickness, what the doctor told you you had, yeah. over your healing? Uh -huh. Come on here, somebody. Uh -huh. Are you professing to be poor uh -huh. in the spirit uh -huh. as well as the natural yes. compared to being wealthy in the spirit uh -huh. as compared to the natural? Yes, Lord. Are you confessing, watch out now, uh -huh. a life of holiness? Yes. Uh -huh. Come on. Are you portraying, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, what you are saying? What are you confessing? You confess that the Lord Jesus, with thy mouth, that you believe in him with thine heart, that God has raised him, his son, from the dead. If you are confessing a life of Christ, why are you not living that life you are confessing? Don't get mad at the message. Nor the messenger. Because God is not calling. People in these days to be prophesying houses, lands, and cars. He is sending a remnant that is going to tell you your soul is in jeopardy and bound for hell. And let me help y'all out. God does not send nobody to hell. He gives us a choice to choose. Choose which way you want to go. I don't care what they tell you. We have choices. We can either be saved or we can sit down and don't be saved. But the Holy Ghost wants to know on today, what are you confessing? You can't live one way. On, on a Sunday morning. And you living like the devil Monday through Saturday. With your daiquiris, with your cigarettes, and with your alcohol. And you in the casino. And then you confessing Christ. Who are you confessing? The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You got to love one. Or you got to hate the other. You cannot serve two masters. And let me help some people out. The church building does not save you. The church building for itself 
are for gathers, faith like believers, to gather together, to encourage and to uplift one another. That is the church building. The church is you. For the Bible says, for me and my house, this house here, we're going to serve the Lord. So what are you confessing? So whatever you confessing displays your outer appearance. Oh my God. It displays the way you walk. It displays the way you talk. It displays the way you live. You should live a life of Christ. Well, where the unbelievers shall see the glow of Christ upon you and you shall pull them to know the Christ you are serving. You shall not be a stumbling block for nobody in this hour. People of God, you can't pray in this hour. You got to make a choice right now. I don't care what your works are in the church. Your church works are not going to get you into heaven. No, it's not. No, it's not. No. No. God would not be sending a word like this. If this is not crucial. God would not be sending a word like this. If he does not love you. He loved you enough to send his darling son Jesus on the cross to die. And Jesus knew some of them would reject him and still rejecting him now. But yet he died for him. He died for us. So what are you confessing? Do your life line up with what you are confessing? Come on here somebody. Oh my God. To confess the Lord Jesus simply means I admit to what Jesus did for me. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to tell of the good news. Yes. Hey, come on here somebody. I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm going to tell them about this, this Jesus that have discovered me. This Jesus that pulled me out of the enemy's hand. This Jesus that captured me when I was a wretch undone. This Jesus that cleaned me up when people counted me out. Jesus counted me in. So that's why I'm a confess it. Come on over and let me tell you something. When you confess Jesus, you ain't going to have the same friends you used to have. Because you could be the life of the party. Come on here somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all ain't been saved your whole life. You know you was the life of the party in the clubs. But when you change when you get saved for real, for real. Because when I was brought up, I would go to church on Sunday morning. Sunday night, I was in the nightclub because I was taught. That's all you had to do is just hit the altar, repent, and go back and do it again. As long as you repent, God forgives you. But one day, once that you get that touch, the real touch, you can't go back and do what you used to do no more. The Bible say old things are passed away. Behold, old things become new. So confessing me, I am just telling y'all the good news of Jesus and what he's done for me. He is my Messiah and he is my Savior. The same thing he done for you, he can do it for you too. Oh my God. In Job 2 and 32, it say, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. When you get tired, sick and tired, or being sick and tired, 
of being sick and tired, of being in your mess. The Bible says, Whos whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. But see, you can't call on him. And then you go right back into your same mess. Because God does not do anything half done. Once you are delivered, I'm not going to tell you, people of God, temptations is going to come. They're going to come. But don't you have the assurance of knowing you can rebuke the temptation. You can stand firm in knowing the God that you serve can keep you and, and is well and able keeping you from falling back into the temptation. Amen. Amen. Falling back into the things that he brought you out of. Yes. Yes, what are you confessing? Uh -huh. Who is your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Yeah. Oh my God. Some say it's Buddha. Ooh, some say Mohammed. Yes. But who Jesus. is your Lord and Savior? Jesus. Hallelujah. For it says, my God, if you believe in thine heart. Yes. Mm. For the Bible says in Matthew 13 and 34, oh, generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things out of the abundance of the heart? The mouth speaks. Yes. All right. Whatever is in your heart, people of God. It's going to come out. Oh, yeah. Whether good, whether evil, Amen. this heart is wicked. Yeah. <laughs> come on here, somebody. Oh, yes. this, this heart is wicked. That's why the Bible say meditate on the word day and night. Because the more you meditate on this word, the more that word is penetrating that heart and getting out of the things that, oh my God, to thee. There is not of God in this heart out. Oh my God. Come on here now. Sometimes you got to tell God, God, fix my heart. Especially when you have been hurt. God, fix my heart. Yes, because the minute you see that person that done something to you, things rises up. No, no. Come on here, somebody. Yes, you saved or not, it's still going to rise up. Oh, yes. And you're going to say, Lord, fix my heart because I don't want to do nothing contrary to your will nor your way. Yes, Lord. Lord, fix my heart. So that's why it's good to use wisdom. No, Come on here, somebody. Before you speak. <laughs> because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. That's why the, the Bible says, what are you confessing? Because whatever you confessing is right here. Don't you know you have power to live a victorious life? We have too many Christians today professing to be saved, living a defeated life. Yes, we do not serve a defeated God. Come on here, somebody. No, really. He no, really. is the ruler over this entire universe. Yes, and we have the authority. Yes. We are his sons. We are his daughters. No, really. So whatever you speak, don't speak death. Speak life. Yes, Speaking Abundantly. Oh my God. Sometimes we wait on God to change situations. And God say, I'm waiting on them. You waiting on God for the come down and change stuff. God says, most of the time, I'm waiting on them. They have the power, they have the authority to speak it, to change it. There are benefits, people of God, oh, yes. when you are saved. Everybody does not enjoy the blessings of God. You only enjoy the blessings of God when you are saved. And let me drop this too. The devil blesses just like God blesses. But the devil blesses is not eternal. 
Because ain't nobody is going to get higher than the devil. He will make you get up so high and he will pull the rug from underneath. So don't say everything is God when you are not saved. And then especially when you are living in sin. Because God does not bless sin. He loves the sinner. Yes, he does. But he hates the sin. Oh, my God. People, sometimes we got to check our relationship with God. And if we have to go back to do our first works over again, I thank God for it. Why? Because he's seeing me to give me another chance to get it right. It doesn't take away from me. It only adds to me. Come on here, somebody. It adds to me to be a testimonial for somebody else. Of the goodness of God and what he has done for me and what he will do for you. So whatever is in your heart, people, God, it's going to come out. It's definitely going to come out. Proverbs 13 and 3 say, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. And he who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. That's why you got to use wisdom. Especially when you call yourself a counseling to people. Oh my God. You cannot use your own emotional effect to counsel somebody else. You got to use the wisdom of God for their situation. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Just pray for them. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 and 29 say, let no corruption communication proceed yes, out of your mouth, yes, but that which is good to the use yes. of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Yes. Whatever come out your mouth should be edifying somebody else, yes. Yes. not downgrading them. This is one of the benefits of being saved because you have the opportunity to minister to somebody when they are down. Oh, my God. The person who thinks they are worthless. God will give you something for to tell them. That's one of the benefits of being saved. You are set apart. You're not like everybody else. You can't be like everybody else. That's why God say some of them are sitting in my church house and they are not saved. They are just going through the motions, but they're not saved. Because they haven't even been presented the steps of salvation. Mm, my God. And these have been people that has been sitting in church for years. It's a sad thing when you go to hell from the church house. When you refuse to turn and when you refuse to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that means when I accept him, I am no longer my own. I can't do what I want to do. I can't go where I want to go. I got to be led by him daily. Come on here, somebody. My God, when God gave me this, I said, oh, Lord. I had to pray and fast. Because the people of God, woman of God, are used to having things, hearing a prophetic words. Because they are in a crunch right now. And they want to get out of this crunch. And, and uh, the Lord say, you give them this word. And in order for them to get out of this crunch, they got to accept my son. Yes. They got to hear the voice of my son. Because yes. I'm not going to bypass nothing until they come through my son first. Yes. Because I got many thinking they are on their way to heaven when they're on their way to hell. Because they haven't accepted my son. Yes. I say, my God. And then I start weeping 
Because he showed me faces. Mm. He showed me face. I started weeping. Yes. And some of them was older people. I said, yes, God, I'll do it. I'll do your will, God, whatever. Yes. And God said, if they reject it, they're not rejecting you. Mm. But they rejecting the one who sent you. Say, my God did the ooh, how yellow bow shot. God say they are displaying a form of godliness. Denying my power. Yes. Second Timothy 3 and 5. Having a form of godliness. Yes. But denying the power thereof. You cannot have power without accepting his son Jesus. That's why Satan beat some of y'all up. Yes. Until you get up in the morning, you're tired. Yeah. You're going through the day, you're tired. Right. You go to bed at night, you're tired. Yeah. You're powerless against Satan. Mm -hmm. But once you accept Jesus, Satan can't do you nothing. He can't even come near you. I'm going to tell you this. It is going to be a spiritual warfare once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because, because Satan is going to be pulling on you and pulling on you for the things you love in the world. Come on here, somebody. He will tip you with that. But as long as you stand firm, stand firm and stand in your word, he's going to back off. Satan just doing his job. Now it's time for you to do your job. What has God called you to do? What are you confessing? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost say the problem with your families is they looking at you. You confessing one thing, but you're living something else. You know, we can be a hindrance for our own uh, children. Yeah. Our own families. Here's some Josephs. And everybody know about Joseph. Oh, yeah. In every family. You can be jealous. They can be jealous of you. But then once they see you want to act like them. The first thing they say, oh, I knew he or she wasn't saved. Because you got out of character. Yeah. Just to hang with him. Yeah. But see, you got to be the peacemaker. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be the difference maker. Yes, you can love them. Uh -huh. You can encourage them. Yes. But then you don't have to do what they do. Uh -huh. All right, you don't have to go where they go. And they will respect you yeah. even the more. Yeah. So what are you confessing? Is your confession making a difference in this world? Because yeah. right. people of God, 